Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk wedding dresses and not just any wedding dresses but royal wedding dresses. So 10 hacks about royal wedding dresses that we can adapt as commoners to our special occasion. Stay tuned because you do not want to miss out on the biggest misconception there is out there on princess dresses and if you want to hear my revelation of a very well established royal supplier of also of celebrities that is mostly unknown but that you as a commoner and as a normal bride can also order from so you would be amongst the royal and VIP customers that is very well possible so let's get started so number one less is more I guess this is the pure definition of elegance elegance lies in the simplicity and lies in leaving away certain things so if you think about the last years, the dresses were rather plain, surprisingly plain in some cases. If you think about Meghan Markle and everybody was think thinking, okay, she is a Hollywood celebrity and she will glam herself up and it was gonna be, you know, a dress with a lot of things going on. And then she came in this very plain and very elegant dress. So that was quite surprising for some people, even though I was not really surprised. Yeah, to every rule, there's also an exception. So if we think about less is more, Obviously Lady Diana, there was a bit more going on, but I mean, you know, she was a very, very young bride and also we must not forget where she got married. And there we are at number two, because the dress must suit the venue. And if we remember that Diana, she got married in St. Patrick's Cathedral, so that was a huge church. So she needed a huge dress and she really had fun. If we, you see interviews with the designer, you know that um, she really had fun in you know, having the longest train, etc. But she needed to fill up this church, so to say, with her dress. And I think it also gave her a bit of confidence, you know. Um, but um, yeah, it was her, She was. it was playful because she was that young and uh, it suited the venue. So you can also think about uh, Duchess Kate, she got married in Westminster Abbey, also a big church but less big than St. Patrick's Cathedral, so her dress was a bit smaller. Very impressive, very elegant, but not as big as Diana's dress. And if we think about Meghan Markle, her church was even smaller. That was uh, the chapel at Windsor Castle and her dress was even a bit, you know, the slimmer, the skirt was not as wide as Kate's. So I think these are all elements that play a role, but also if we think about these three brides, then we are back also at number three, that the dress should enhance the personality of the bride, it should reflect the personality. On this day, you should be the best version of yourself. Of course, you're getting dressed up, but you should not get disguised. So this is really, very very important because many girls out there who have maybe not worn such a big and elegant dress before in their life they might at the beginning feel uncomfortable and maybe say well that is not me well then maybe you have not yet found the dress that is for you but there is a dress for everyone think about it when you choose it you should still feel like yourself and this is one aspect i want to dwell upon a bit if you should watch this video not because you are getting married but maybe a friend of yours then and you will maybe accompany her when she selects her dress think about that when you give her advice and when she asks you for advice that it's not about what you want for you or what you find most beautiful but you have to think which dress makes her shine makes her glow and where is she in her element and you will see that show that on her, she will show that on her face she will light up once she has found the dress that is made for her so think about that it should really reflect the personality don't try to be someone you are not we are only talking tricks we are not pretending to be princesses we are not only looking what are they doing right the princesses and what can we copy or what can we learn from them in the sense what would be right for us and I think elegance is really something that is uh, true for everybody that we all want to be that on that day. A dress that suits the venue is also something that we all want. And number three, where we are, personality is key. I think there you cannot do anything wrong once you found the dress that is enhancing your beauty, your style, and emphasizing your most beautiful you know, aspects, then that is the right dress for you. But to make sure that there is no misunderstanding, even if you have the nicest décolleté in the world, that's all right for the evening. But bear in mind, if you get married in church, please, then we are at number four. 
the dress should not reveal too much. Of course, especially when you're getting married in church, like most royal brides are getting married in church, there are a few exceptions, but uh, of course then it should uh, be, you know, corresponding and uh, you should not sh show cleavage and you should not have a slit that is really high or a lot of transparency, especially around here, should not be going on. So bear that in mind, in the evening you can um, still, you know, there are means and ways to change, we will gonna address that later, but bear that in mind that you not, do not reveal too much because this is going to distract the eye. What happens if there is such a distraction going on? There is a very, very good example. It was not a royal bride, but it was a royal bride's maid. It was the sister of Kate Middleton when she got married. You remember that she had this form-fitting, beautiful Alexander McQueen dress, but everybody was talking about her behind after the wedding of her sister. I think nobody wants that to happen. And even if it was a very elegant dress, I personally, as a woman, didn't see anything wrong in that, but gentlemen react differently, obviously, um, and it caught their eye and they got distracted. So that was, that was even worse because they got distracted by the bridesmaid from the royal bride. But even if you as a bride, you wear something very form-fitting or very revealing, you do not, do not want any of your guests or even family, even worse, to talk about body parts after your wedding. They, you want them to talk about you as a bride as a whole, about your happiness, about the special day, about the elegance, but you don't want an uncle discussing, you know, special body parts of you. You really do not want that. Bear that in mind. So try to be, um, you know, take that a bit back. Um, and in the evening, you, there are means and ways of, of having a party version of your dress. We will be addressing that, but I thought that was really yeah, not so good. One can also learn out of mistakes of royal weddings. Number five, don't be too trendy. Well, it seems obvious. Of course, you want to be, you know, you will be watching your pictures in 10, 20, 30 years time. And when looking at those pictures, you do not want to think, oh my God, what did I wear back then? And this is happening when you are going too much on a trend. So let's think, for example, Lady Diana, I mean it was, it's an historical dress, but still when you look at it, you know it was very 80s and a lot of brides copied it later. And if you see this, those cheaper versions, and that's what happens unfortunately when you go cheaper, then um, yeah, it, it's not so nice. And many mothers who got married in the 80s and who wanted their daughters to wear their dress, all the daughters said, no, <laughs> that's not for me, that's not an option because that is so outdated and that is a sign that it was too trendy. Now it's very difficult, especially when you're young and you have not lived through so many trends, um, to recognize something that is a trend. So if you want to find out how not to make this mistake, maybe study royal wedding dresses starting with Grace Kelly. I mean, I will have popped up in the course of this video most pictures and then study what are classical elements that still would look good today and what are elements where maybe one of these brides also made a bit the mistake of going a bit too trendy. There are maybe two brides that uh, come to our attention. I mean, it is Lady Diana with the bows and the big sleeves, um, very voluminous, a lot of things going on. That is probably something that would not really suit our times nowadays. But there's also another bride um, that is Queen Sylvia from Sweden. I mean, she had a very elegant Dior dress, don't get me wrong, but still you can place it in time. The beautiful dress, but uh, still it's, it's very 70s. So um, if you like that, it's fine, but it's still, it was a bit trendy. But lucky enough, it was very simple and her accessories were very classic. So there we are again. The accessories are really an important element and can help us, you know, um, bring the timeless element into it. So that's also a trick that we can follow. So there we are, number six. Um, we just talked about uh, not revealing too much. I mean, that is maybe something that most of you agree upon when we talk about the ceremony and uh, especially when it's going on in church. But many of you might think, yes, but my party dress and that should be a bit, you know, different and there I can show off a bit more. And there I perfectly agree. So we can also learn from the royal brides. How do they solve this problem? Because they also have this very same desire. Well, they opt for a versatile dress or 
they opt for even a second dress. So if we go into the versatile dress, we can take the example of Kate Middleton. She just took off the lace top of her dress. So she, then she had a bustier dress and uh, we saw her with a jacket over it. You know, it was like this very fluffy cardigan that she wore, but I'm sure that during the reception in the evening when she was dancing, she has taken that off. So there's this versatility to the dresses. So you have one dress or you have two dresses in one, let's put it that way. Or you get a second dress for the evening reception, like Meghan Markle did, or Princess Eugenie, she did the same. So I will pop up the pictures. You probably remember that these are the most recent ones. So for the ceremony, I think what we said earlier on is still true, but I understand that when you party and when you dance and when you get warm, there's maybe another aspect to it. Number seven, the color. Well, if we look at all these wedding dresses from those royal brides, we will see none of them had a really bright white dress. They are all ivory dresses. And why is that? I mean, of course, white stands for virginity, all these traditional aspects, but it is also about the skin tone. For most brides, I mean, very, very few exceptions, but ivory suits the skin tone much better than the plain white. Try it on, um, you know, have some samples uh, on your skin, next to your skin, next to your face and look what looks better with your complexion. That is very, very important that it enhances your beauty and I would say in 8 or even 9 out of 10 cases, ivory will be the better solution. Pay attention to this aspect. It might even be another color, it could be blush if you want to go for another color, but pay attention that the color you are choosing is suiting your complexion and your tongue. Number eight, royal brides do not buy dresses from the rack. I mean, that is no surprise, you all know that, but you probably never thought about it or said, yeah, but I cannot afford it, that's too expensive, and this is why I'm buying uh, ready-made dresses. Well, the thing about the price is not true, and um, you should really check it out and look at the prices. Of course, go to the shops, check out the dresses from the rack, and if there's one, where you say it's absolutely mine and it's my dream dress, I do not want to convince you to do otherwise. But it might also be a way to find out what silhouette suits you most and what silhouette enhances your personality, your beauty, as we said before, and what suits the venue. But it really is worthwhile checking out on some tailors and on some artisans. They can make beautiful dresses. They most of the time have pictures or sample dresses that they can also show you. And don't be afraid because you can also ask them that when they you know, develop the design. They can first of all draw it for you and you can of course bring pictures and then together you have this creative process. You will, you know, you're not only buying a dress from her or getting a dress made from this tailor, him or her but you're also creating and crafting a memory. This process of creating your dress, that is honestly something I do not want to miss, this memory. It is so beautiful and it's so unique and you know there's only one person in the world owning this dress and that is you. So try it out, have a look around, who are the artisans um, in your area, uh, look for them online and there are so many artists who are making wonderful dresses. Ask your friends, um, maybe they have had dresses made for other occasions and it's really worthwhile checking out this option because very often it's cheaper than buying the dresses and be aware that most wedding dresses nowadays, the ones that you buy from the rack, are made in China. So the designs are maybe made somewhere else but the dresses are sewn in China. After realizing how important it is to support our local businesses, this is at least a question you should ask yourself and uh, check if this is an option for you. It could well become one of the most beautiful experiences that you have ever made. Well, and there we are at our second last point, the cut. So also when you have this dress made, don't be afraid that um, you then bring the you know very ex expensive fabric and then they sew it and then you don't like it. I mean, they will, you know, when they will shape the form, they will take some cotton or very cheap material that they have anyhow there. They might first might make it on a small puppet, that's how they made it for me, and then they were sewing it on me, and then I could decide on the neckline and the width of the skirt, and you can still change things. So it's really no risk, and you will really see 
this turning into reality, your dream into reality, your concept into reality. And now I want to address what I announced earlier, the biggest misconception there is about princess dresses out there. I always personally find it so funny when uh, people say, well, this is a princess dress, because the, what they call princess dresses are not the dresses of the real princesses. These are the dresses of the fairy tale princesses, of the Walt Disney princesses. So they're all crinoline dresses. And these are the dresses that have been worn in the 19th century. So that is what we know from Empress Sissi, you know, Romy Schneider and Empress Elizabeth in Austria, my hometown. And this was transferred into all those fairy tale movies. And this is why it's called the princess dress. But in the meantime, a I don't remember one princess having worn such a princess dress. So if you want to be a real princess, you have to go by the real royal dresses and not by the fairy tale dresses. Obviously, if this is what you like, then go for it by all means. And if it suits you and if it enhances your beauty, but bear in mind that it has nothing to do with a real princess. It is just that we are so Walt Disney in the meantime that this is kind of you know, switching into reality, but it has nothing to do with reality. If you look at all the dresses that I will have popped up during this video, there's maybe the one from, um, yeah, Princess Grace, was Grace Kelly uh, from Monaco. Well, that was a white skirt. And of course, the one from Diana, that could still be that. But there you are again, she was a very young bride, so she might have still been under this influence a bit, and it suited the 80s, obviously. But all the other brides, there is nothing like a so-called princess dress that has ever been worn. So if you want to go with the real royalty, then we have another option. And here it is, it will follow this revelation of a supplier that you can turn to. So there we are at number 10. And it is probably, except the first and the last recommendation that I made, the less is more. And we find it here again, number 10, is the most important thing is the quality of the material. If you go for very plain dresses, I would also say you must go for the best material there is. So there is really no alternative to silk or a mixture of silk and viscose or bamboo even, but it must be a natural fiber because the natural fiber has this beautiful shine. And if you have a beautiful fabric with this beautiful shine, then you don't need a lot of things going on in your dress. Then the simplicity will enhance the fabric and you will have this beautiful aura that will be created. And so it's all about the fabric, whether it's satin, whether it's uh, lace or anything you you can opt for what what uh, it can be taffeta and it it taft and it can be tulle be careful with tulle most of it is made out of polyester and please bear in mind that polyester is based on petrol and is nothing but plastic so there's also one very important aspect why you should not opt for the polyester fabrics it is very warm when you wear it. It has no comfort of wear and if you're getting excited and you're nervous uh, in church and you're sweating you might get a smelly problem also later on when dancing. And another aspect is it's not sustainable. One can only recycle polyester two or three times and then it has to go into landfilling. We have millions and billions of tons of clothes made out of polyester that go into landfilling because it, they cannot be recycled anymore. So please go for natural fibers, especially on this important day. And there we are. I'm gonna reveal this one supplier that the royal brides are opting for. They all opt for silk, they all opt for natural fibers. And when they go for lace, they opt for Sophie Alette. And Sophie Alette has the most beautiful machine-made lace there is. And um, all big designers are buying from them. And it's a French company. And we had Jackie Kennedy who has ordered from them. Um, we have Elizabeth Taylor who had dresses made with this lace. And last but not least, we had Kate Middleton's top. The lace was from Sophie Alette and also uh, Amal Clooney. Her dress was all covered in Sophie Alette. I will pop up the logo and the name of the brand here so that you can copy it, you can go on the website 
and uh, yeah you can order from them they have showrooms and you would have to have your dress tailored so that you can buy the fabric from Sophia Lett uh, in that case you can ask your tailor to order from them also if you want to buy silk or if I recommend silk you might think yes but Joanna you I know you're right but silk is so expensive well then buy the silk directly from the suppliers of silk you find many of them online before you do so you should have already fixed you know the pattern of your dress so that your tailor can tell you how many meters you will need for your dress and then you go and order the material yourself sometimes some of those suppliers of this fabric supplies don't deliver to individual customers they don't do b2c but then you can select the silk yourself online and you can have samples sent to you and once you have made your selection then you can ask your tailor to turn to the very supplier that you have selected and then you will already know the prices so there will be no charge on it by the tailor because you will know the price and then you get it for the purchasing price this is how i did it and uh, so at the end i will pop up the dress that i was wearing i myself went to sophia led and had a look at their beautiful laces but um, i wanted in fact to evoke a bit the lace that my mom had on her wedding dress and uh, my dress was a bit, uh, you know, a reminiscence to my mother's dress and it didn't quite have what I looked for. So I discovered another artisan, a um, Spanish lady who is still hand stitching lace. She's one of the last ones in the world and uh, unfortunately I think this tradition will get lost. So I had the top of my dress and my veil handmade, hand stitched in Spain. And in my next accessories video, I will introduce you to this supplier of South of Spain. Her name is Encarnita and she agreed to do an interview with me. I will share a film where she shows how she makes the lace. And uh, yeah, and I will also show you how I selected and found my jewelry. That is costume jewelry, historical costume jewelry, collector's pieces absolutely affordable and they look like real diamonds and are not. If these tips and tricks and suppliers interest you then make sure to subscribe, hit the bell and give me a thumbs up and if you want me to tackle other subjects please let me know what subjects you want me to address and I'll be happy to do so.